so uh, I hope this week's challenge is treating you well. So today we will be seeing about the model training, hyperparameter tuning and evaluation. Some of them are uh, something or things or titles that are, uh, you are familiar with somehow. So that the end of the, or the goal of uh, having a training using machine learning models and things like that is to have a better or an efficient result or a good prediction, right? So uh, model training and hyperparameter tunings, there are two crucial states in machine learning workflow or in the, there are two uh, useful uh, process in order to have the indigo that we want or a good prediction in our data. So what is model training? I know you're very familiar with this, but model training, it involves the process of fitting a machine learning algorithm with data to learn patterns and relationships, right? So when we talk about model training, it's the model itself that, that is going to learn something from the data. It's not a, it's not going to adjust itself or it's not going to adjust the model itself, but we'll try to follow some trained or some um, behavior or character from the data. Then it will predict the next data or then it would try to predict the next information or the next um, data based on the previous one. So the training process includes using an optimization algorithms like gradient descent. Uh, I think I saw some link shared in the resource uh, channel about gradient descent. So uh, also we have mentioned them slightly on the previous sessions. Gradient descent will try to will help us to minimize the loss function, or the loss function means the error uh, by adjusting the model's weight. Okay, in weight by me we mean like the weight, the uh, bias, and things like that by adjusting the parameters, some parameters which are not hyperparameter. It will try to. Uh, bring a better result or a better output and an uh, efficient process, okay? So like it will use process like gradient descent or algorithms like, uh, they are algorithms, they are, uh, yeah, they are optimization algorithms like gradient descent and it will decrease or minimize the loss function. So the data is typically split into training and validation. So we will train by the training data and we will validate it using the validation data. So what do we expect from uh, doing um, uh, training the machine learning with the model itself? We learned parameters like weights in neural networks. It depends on what type of model are we using. If it is a um, neural network model or if it is just linear regression, other classification types of models, what type of models are we using? But depending on that, it will uh, the train model will with learned parameters, okay? That can be used for prediction. And we're not the one, it's going to be like the optimization process, like, like the gradient descent that we've mentioned on the previous slide. It's going to tell us or provide us with a better uh, form of the parameters or better number for the parameters in order to be efficient, okay? Decreasing the weights or increasing the weights are mo uh, most of the things that we follow. When we came to hyperparameter tuning, what the difference is, it involves finding an optimal set of hyperparameters for machine uh, for the machine learning model. So we're talking about not teaching the le the machine the model, but changing the parameter of the model itself. Okay, they are parameters that are not learned from the data, but are set before the training process, such as the learning rate, batch size, number of hidden layers, and number of trees in random forest. From those, I think you're familiar with the number of trees in random forest and hidden layers in uh, neural networks, right? So we have seen them in the previous <coughs> sessions and you've exercised with the random forest problem before. So uh, those are the things that we're going to adjust or that we're going to give numbers for. It's not something that the model is going to recommend uh, for us by itself. Uh, like we can use some uh, optimization actually or recommendation uh, algorithms or um, uh, yeah processes but rather than that we, we we're the one to adjust some numbers for the, for them like we can as we have mentioned earlier we can minimize the hidden layer we can increase the hidden layer and things like that okay so um the learning rate uh, as i told you before it depends on the model itself what type of uh, hyperparameters do they have learning rates there are some models like maybe the large language models they always have the learning rate we can increase the learning rate so sometimes if we have increased the learning rate too much it might overfit the data which is 
it's going to be too precise that it's not Greek, okay? Uh, so hyperparameters for a model, a model can be chosen using several techniques like the random search, grid search, manual search. There is a Bayesian optimi optimization. Also, the, there is the uh, grid search method. Yeah, it's already mentioned here. So that there are different methods that are used to that will help us to, cho to choose between different hyperparameters, okay? So as I told you, it's going to be still a choice. Uh, depending on the model that we're going to use, it's still going to be a choice. So which parameters are going to be good um, for the model to be efficient? So we're going to adjust that model by directly going to the process by trying to feed the model to the data, okay? So how does it work? So an, opti an optimization process maybe, but I feel like maybe if there is a confusion before that, uh, for example, like, let's say we are using the, the SVA model, okay? So the hyperparameters on that is the C, the regularization parameter, the kernel, and the gamma kernel coefficient, or RBF, RBF poly sigmoid, it can be linear too. So those types of, uh, actually the kernel is the thing that can be linear. The, those types of parameters are called hyperparameters that affect the model itself, not the uh, training process or the, the training data process. So it's important to differentiate between the model training and the hyper, like the the hyperparameter tuning. Okay, so let's get back and how does it work? Let's say let's see how it works. So as you've seen in your document, it's also recommended to use one of the two: the grid search or the random search method. So. Uh, yeah, is the thing that I've talked about. Uh, uh, is it clear until now? Since you know, it's the point is to know the inverse or to know what type of parameters are we going to consider, like the hyperparameters, and are we going to um, try to pick or to try to bring one of the most efficient uh, number of uh, number? Yeah. So yeah, it needs to be. We need to clarify that it's something that is not related with the training part that's the most important thing okay when we say model training as you know it's the usual training method and the best thing is or the the thing that we try to do is to make the model or to try to have to get a method that will enable us to teach the model as fast as we can and as efficient as we can okay so it's about teaching the model while it is hyperparameter tuning, it's about the model itself. Those are the parameters that the model needs in order to be a model, okay, in order to predict. So if you get to this point, uh, an optimization procedure involves defining a search space. Maybe, yeah. Am I clear? I was asking if I if, if it is clear until now. Okay. Okay, then we can proceed. So how does it work? An optimization procedure involves defining a search space first. So as I told you, we're going to find some numbers for some parameters, right? So we're going to define a search space. This can be thought of geometrically as an n dimension. So yeah, it's going. this is going to complicate things. But yeah, just consider we're going to put a number under a circle, okay? Since we know what type of numbers are going to work for models, we're, we know, you know, so if it's going to be, for example, if it is something that works about around one two three and something like that we can define numbers from one to ten or one to fifteen we're not going to get hundred okay so we're going to we know by knowing about the model what type of numbers or which level of numbers are going to be are going to be assigned for that value and then we're going to define a search space for that yeah, this can be thought of geometrically as an in dimension volume where each hyperparameter should represent different dimensions and the scale of the dimensions are the value that, okay, we, you can jump this. So what is the search space? That's volume to be searched where each dimension represents a hyperparameter and each point represents one model configuration. So whatever type of hyperparameter tuning method that we're using, we're going to define a search space. So the, the hyperparameters that we're going to, are going to assign or are going to take one of those there's one of those numbers that are indicated or that are mentioned in the search space okay so a point in the search space is a vector with a specific value for each hyperparameter uh, value the goal of the optimization procedure is to find a vector that results in the best performance of the model after learning such as the maximum accuracy or minimum error so maybe we can get the the, the accuracy and minimize the error uh, using the evaluation method but the goal is 
to find the vector the result that results in the best performance to find the vector from where from the search space that we have put it or from the uh yeah from the space or uh from the space that we have uh, assigned first so there are a range of different optimization algorithms also uh two of the simplest and most common methods are random search and grid search so what is the difference between the two random search it defines search so you can see that right it's random it defines so yeah we, you will put some idea uh, when we say random you'll put some idea about how it's going to work it defines a search space as a bounded domain of hyperparameter value and randomly sample points in that domain so uh, we've just said we're going to create a search space right so random search is going to search or it's it's going to take random numbers from that circle or that domain that we have put it and it's going to predict uh, or it's going to evaluate the performance of the, the model on that specific hyperparameter assigned by itself from the space that we have given okay while grid search defines a search space as a grid of hyperparameter values and evaluate every position in the grid which is we're going to assign we're not going to just assign a space okay we're going to assign every uh, numbers that are going to be calculated calculated so the grid search will go through every numbers that we have assigned and it's going to choose which hyperparameter is uh, in which the hyperparameter is the model working efficiently okay so you can guess that from the random search we're going to put or uh, we're going to say this number of iteration is enough for this number of samples you can take this uh, number of samples from all the data while in grid search if we put it uh, let's say uh, uh, there are different hyperparameters right so it's going to uh, relate every hyperparameters with each other so grid search you can just see that grid search is going to take some time while random search is going to do um, so maybe yeah you can answer that if you understand the difference between random search and grid search why don't you mention some difference uh, what do you think will be the benefit of random search or the disadvantage of random search and it goes the same for for the grid search what do you think that will be i didn't see who uh, whose thumbs was up because i was late but i'm asking you if you can answer one of you just a simple question if we understand what the difference between random forest and grid searches what do you think the advantage of the one or, or advantage of the random search will be over the over grid search do you get my question? So, like, if you if you just say that you, you gave my question, I'm going to ask you the answer. That's why you're not answering. It's just simple. I thought it is simple. That's why. Yeah, okay, Joe, let's just see what the it's easy you know if, if random search is going to be if we, if, we, if we are the one to define the number of iteration or the number of sample the random search algorithm is going to take from the uh, search space then it's going to take a very little time so if we have many data to work on the random search will not is going to be the effective one to use than the grid search because like imagine if we have four parameters for we're going to see it on the uh, illustration part but if we have uh, four hyperparameters the run the grid search will try to connect or will try to find the output uh, by iterating within every hyperparameters and by you know connecting every hyperparameters with each other so sometimes if we have much data it's going to use grid search is going to be somehow costly and you can understand why right because it's going to do it's going to go over every data or every hyperparameters so like what are the hyperparameters it depends on the type of the model as we've uh, said so maybe in this svm model case c for the regularization parameter kernel and the gamma so there is three things to assign for the gamma the kernel for it, if it is going to be linear polynomial rb sigma since the svm model is can we can use it for both the classification and uh, regression uh, type of problems okay so see for the regularization parameters 
So what is the difference? Again, to make it clear between the model training and hyperparameter tuning, model training focus on learning the parameters of the model from the data. Hyperparameter tuning focus on the selecting the best hyperparameters that control the learning process. See? So it's this one is mm, it's about the learning parameters. So how fast is going to learn from the training data? While hyperparameter focus on selecting the best hyperparameters that control the learning process at all. Model training involves single process of training with a fixed set of hyperparameters. Right, we're not going to change the hyperparameters while we are training the model. And hyperparameter tuning involves training multiple models with different hyperparameters and selecting the best one. Right. So after reaching the base type of uh, uh, hyperparameter uh, choice, then we're going to proceed to the training. So model training is about optimizing the model's parameter based on the data, while hyperparameter is about finding the base settings for those parameters to improve the model's performance, okay? So there, and then there's the evaluation metrics. So after all, we're, we need to evaluate how our, our model is performing within those hyperparameters, right? So it's quantitative that we have some evaluation metrics like the accuracy, precision, recall, uh, the ROC curve, and things like that. So um, these metrics provide insights into how well the model is performing and help in comparing different models or algorithms. We have different metrics for classification and regression metrics. So you need to uh, search on what is the disadvantage if we're going to use uh, evaluation metrics that are useful for regression problem like the root mean square root, yeah, uh, the root mean square method, and uh, applying them for the classification problem, or maybe some uh, evaluation metrics that are applied for classifications like the accuracy, precision, ROC, and applying them to the regression metrics. And it's possible to apply them for both, but it's not recommended. So the evaluation metrics, it's the first one is accuracy. You can understand uh, what they do from their, you know, from common sense, but there are so, these four variables we need to know while uh, trying to evaluate uh, the model. That is the true positive, the true negative, the false positive, and the false negative. So the true positive is, it's the, the prediction, it's or the data that are predicted as a true value and which are really true, okay? They are, you know, uh, true or positive in both cases. They are true or they are uh, predicted as a true, or maybe if it is one and zero, they are predicted as one and positive. Uh, I mean, positive means they are uh, predicted as one and it is true, which means it's correct. Predicting, predicting, predicting them as one was the right prediction, okay? So true negative, again, it is true, which means it's predicted well or right, but it is negative, okay? it's predicted as zero and it was supposed to be zero it is zero false positive it's not right and it's predicted as one false negative it's not right and also it's predicted as zero okay so if you know this then the metrics uh, turn around those uh, uh, those variables so the accuracy is the proportion of correctly classified instance out of the total instance so if tp plus tn which is all the truly predicted uh, or all the correctly predicted uh, futures or data and from all the predictions okay so it just continues like that proper precision is the proportion of true positive instance out of the predicted positive instance i know we're going to say true positive true negative uh this in uh, this space so maybe it's not easy to it will confuse us okay so proportion of true positive instance out of the predicted positive in instance, we can just see the formula TP, which is really true, which is true and also correct to be, which is correctly predicted as a one. Okay, this one is better. And true positive plus false positive, okay? From how how much amount of the all the data or all the predicted data as one is true or is correctly one. Okay, so maybe the recall is very uh, kind of similar with this one, which is uh, TP, uh, TP over TP plus FN, which is the false negative one. It recalls uh, the proportion of true positive instance out of all the actual positive instance, which is the proportion of true positive prediction among all actual positive uh, for a class. So, yeah, yeah, like. 
So is this matching with the definition recall and search protection of all actual positive instance, which is the TP, right? How many were correctly classified? High recall indicates a low. We need to search for the formula, right? Okay, I think from all the, uh, the from the all the, uh, the predicted uh, data as the true positive, which is one and which is true and one and false negative. Yeah, which is not right and which is predicted as zero. Which one of it is TP or which one uh, which one of it is truly? What portion of that data is truly one? So, and then there is the ROC, which is receiver operating characteristics and its area under the curve. Uh, ROC it's a curve and we're going to calculate it's going to calculate the area under the curve and the ju ju judgment is going to be depending on the area under the curve of the receiver operating characteristics so it measures the ability of the classifier to distinguish between classes so let's just seeing the AUC or the area under the curve which is if the result is one it's the perfect classifier if it is AUC or 0 0.5 it's no discriminative abil ability which means equivalent to random guess and if it is less than 0 0.5 then random guess is going to be better than using this uh, model okay using this model in this type in this form uh, so yeah as I told you uh, some there are we have different types of uh, matrix matrix evaluation matrix for classification and regression probably so what type of uh, model are you thinking to use for your assignment because I think we are going to use both the pretty the classification and uh, classification and regression types right because we, we were asked like almost four or three questions to predict three or four uh, futures in your document so you need to use I mean you're not going to use one or two models you might use models um, that are greater than that so yeah you might need to use uh, both of the classification metrics and the regression metrics okay so let's see just some demonstration on the famous iris data so we're going to use the SPM model and the iris data we've loaded the iris data so here is the data at the we're going to put you know the type of the flowers uh, i think most of you are familiar with the iris data so the prediction is going to be what type of um, uh, the, the flower species right if it is seto star versi color and things like that so we're going to predict the flowers type of flowers so we we have just it's not that important this we've just used the train test split method and trying to fit here we're just trying to fit the model okay so what do we mean by uh, hyperparameter tuning? As we've mentioned, for example, for SPA method, there are the kernels, the C, and uh, yeah, it's not mentioned here, I guess. We can just use the alpha or the, it's mentioned here, right? We can go with uh, gamma care. We, we can go with the, one of the RB, the poly or the sigmoid for the gamma and for the kernel we might go with the linear polynomial rb and, uh, and again rb and sigmoid so minimizing the hyperparameters here it will help us to decide to minimize the cost okay we can just put uh, one decision for one of the hyperparameters and tune the others okay so for key value in, in kernel so here we're trying to go manually with an one pain and 20 okay so yeah, you, you can see that rb1 which is we are using the rb for the kernels and one for c rb for the kernels and 10 for c so this is the manual way of uh, how the grid search cv works actually this is literally how this optimization algorithm or the grid search works okay it's going to here we're using the grid search itself we have called the grid the grid search on the SVM, uh, uh, on the SP model and the gamma it's already auto so which means we we have we have we've left with only two parameters which is the same the kernel to iterate through 
and it's going to do the same thing as here. The difference is we've done this manually. We've changed the C, para, the C and the kernels manually. Here, the we are using the grid search. So the grid search will just automatically say the gamma 202 and then uh, I create to through 11020 and database and linear. So what we were saying uh, previously is that it will un assign C1 and it will calculate the model performance in both RBF and linear. Then for C10, both RBF and linear. Here, as just mentioned here, RBF1, RBF10, RBF20. The next one is linear, RBF1. I mean, linear 1, linear 10, and linear 20. Okay. So we can, uh, It's this is not, maybe if this is going to be not easy to see. So we can put the results, the say this results in a data uh, frame. So what with the output of this uh, algorithm or the grid search was, uh, is the mean FT time, the STDT, the mean score, the STD again. Uh, so we're going to focus on the important ones, which is we're trying to predict the correct or the efficient C value, the kernel value. And mean test score is not even that, imp it's not that important, but we can just uh, give rearrange them to this one. So from this is just the, param the parameter. So we're not going to pick the best one. Also, we can use the best parameter to pick the best parameters from the upper one. Okay, we can just put them uh, as a note here. Okay. So it says C1 and the RBF kernel is the best parameters from all the iterated parameters, okay? From the six iterated uh, hyperparameters, these are the best values for the hyperparameters up there. And we can also uh, put the best score. How was the score while trying to use uh, this? It's 0 0.98, which is really close to one, okay? Um, so let's just put it for a, for a variable so that we can use it later for, uh, for the fitting method or for model fitting method. Well, this is good, I guess. And so yeah, we need to run this all over again. It was reconnected. So let's just uh, try the another method, which is the randomized uh, CV method or randomized search method. You can see that to, re to reduce the number of iteration and with random combination of parameters, this is useful when you have too many parameters to try and your training time is longer. So it, it helps to reduce the cost of completion. So here we have imported the randomized search CV and we'll have adjusted C values in kernel values, same as the previous one, right? But it's not going to iterate through all it's going to iterate based on the number of iterations that we have given here, okay? Okay, so since our iteration number is two, we're going to see, yeah, uh, we have put the target values in the data here, and the output is going to be the zeros and the ones output is going to be, or we are going to have two output and with um, parameter 20 and linear, 10 and RB, okay? So just like this, we have, you can see the difference between the a scalar, and, uh, I mean, the, I'm sorry, the randomized search and the randomized search and the research method. We can increase the number of iteration here we'll, to three. And the third one was uh, one in linear and with this the mean test score. So the disadvantage, maybe we can consider that the, one of the disadvantage of randomized search is since it's going to numbers or samples randomly, it might miss one of the optimum numbers or an efficient numbers by picking one of the numbers. Okay, we can also 
jump this one yeah let's try to do it again and let's let us try to fit the number of uh, the number of, that we have obtained from uh, the previous one okay so we have used the research method here gamma automatically priority true okay i think we're trying to use yeah we're trying to fit the models here or yeah based on the our best parameters mentioned above okay so as best parameters we're going to take the best parameters that are predicted on the first state and then feed them on our uh, uh model so i think it's clear about the gradient search and the randomized the gradient cv and the randomized search so the next step is to feed those parameters on our model and try to see the evaluation matrix which are accuracy precision recall they found scores are rosy okay so trying to feed the models uh, the parameters in our model we're going to feed them this way and predict the model so checking the accuracy we're going to have those values so we need to know uh, what number is does it mean uh, like if the accuracy number is high what does it mean of course it's going to be positive uh, if the even the rosy number we have just checked on the on our ppt we have just emitted one ROC number, which means it we can it's we can perfectly use this uh, algorithm, okay? Or it's a perfect cl classifier. So yeah, we can put the classification, uh, the evaluation method based on this. So, and then if we, if we have uh, bad evaluations, we can try another uh, tuning for our hyperparameters, and also we can we will uh, train our models differently and be back and yeah check for them again, okay? Okay, so yeah, this is the presentation. So if you have any question or suggestions, is that clear or are you confused? Sorry. Do you understand the concept and any feedback? Thank you, Absara. Okay, thank you, Sian. Matthews, Junior, and Nadia. Okay, Junior. So I'm expecting a question from Matthews and Nadia. Matthews, can you speak? Okay, Nadia. Matthews, any question? We're just six uh, here, so it's it's going to be okay to discuss. Matthews, are you even there? Okay. Could you share us the file? Yes, it's going to be shared on the usual folder, okay, on the technical documents. Both of them put the file in the code. Matthews? Okay, Matthews might not be here. So, yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, good luck with your, uh, with the rest of the days and with your tasks. So, yeah, bye. Okay, Matthias was there. <laughs>